Hi there, my name's Lou Ambrosi and I work in the training department at Noah's Ark. And today I'm joined by Brianna Smith, who's an occupational therapist here at Noah's Ark. And today we're gonna to talk a bit about toilet training and, and hopefully share some tips you might find useful. Hi Brianna, you were telling me it's really good to have a goal around toilet training. Yeah, thanks Lou. I really believe that having goals is important even for toilet training, because it lets us know how our child is doing. So, for example, you're trying to get your child to sit on the toilet. Mm. And so at the moment, they might not be doing that at all, but they might tell you when they need to go to the toilet or when they've wet their nappy, but they're a bit scared to sit on the toilet. So your goal might be that initially that they, your child will sit on the toilet for two minutes fully clothed. And then later down the track, you might shift that goal and that they're sitting on the toilet with their nappy on. But it lets you see that progress and that change, even if it isn't only little. That's a great idea. So having those little incremental goals, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've actually read it heaps of times that you've got to wait till a child's dry for two hours. Do you think you do? Look, I say that's one of the prerequisites for, for toileting. But I think there's so much you can do without that, you know, to get your child ready and start that toilet training process. So I'd really encourage parents not to worry about that too much and not to put off toilet training if that's mm. what's putting them off because there's lots of other skills that they need. So they need to be able to sit on the toilet. They need to be able to recognise when they're wet or they're dry. There's lots of elements to it and there's lots of things. Sometimes even people call it pre-toilet training. Mm. But there's lots of steps that people can take. Fabulous. Uh, I also, I heard you um, explaining to me the other day that the environment, like where the toilet is situated, is important to think about. What sort of things should I think about there? So I like to think about, is your child comfortable? Do they feel safe and secure? And what sensory needs do they maybe have in the environment? So when I'm thinking about particularly comfort and safety, in a way can go together a little bit. Is your child able to sit on the toilet by themselves? You know, mm. are they stable or are they actually really wobbly? And can they get up onto the toilet? So some kids might need uh, a little step stool or a toilet insert just to make them feel more safe and secure. Other children might need more support. So you can get specialized toilet seats that have a bit more support to them so that your child has the most luck of having some success. Um, and in regards to the sensory side of things, there are so many different sensory inputs in the toilet. There's lots of smells. Um, the light might be different to other parts of your house. The noises, the echo. Often bathrooms and toilets are in a really echoey place. So if your child has got some sensory needs or some sensory preferences that are different to other members of the family, we might need to consider those. And they might be things that are putting the child off going into that environment. So maybe having some background music or a scented candle that the child really likes. Just thinking about what does your child need and how does that fit with the toilet? You know, I would never have thought of that, um, but bathrooms are really echoey. That's, you're so right. You're yeah. absolutely right. So is, are there some things I should think about when to start? Yeah, there's no right time. And I think or the sorry there's no perfect time mm. and but what I would say is to find the right time for you now a lot of families they decide that when they start the toilet training they want to let their child run free a bit and so doing that when you've got a bit of time to do it is usually a good train of thought so you know school holidays if you're not going anywhere might be a better time to try and get started than um, school time where you're really rushed and busy in the mornings or you're not wanting the child to potentially have accidents in other environments actually doing it during school time might be useful because it gives them support from other people so there's no perfect time it's what feels best for you so if you're feeling stressed and you're feeling like oh I just I'm not ready yet then just hold off a little bit until you feel comfortable I, I always um, chose for my children warmer weather just yes. so it was easier for cleanup. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's very common, yep. Yeah. Brianna, 
is there a surefire way? What I'm hearing is, you know, it's really dependent on what's going on for your child and, and not to put pressure on yourself or the child. Yeah. And there's so many different ways that you can do this process. And I think it, it's what sits comfortably with you. Um, some people like to build it into their routine. So they might um, start toilet timing before um, or as they're getting their child dressed in the morning or they might um, do it half an hour after every meal or snack. Um, other families like to have some set times during the day. There's no perfect way. There's, it suits every family's different. But what I find as well is that sometimes though, before you get started with the toilet training process, maybe keep a diary and keep a bit of a record of when your child is wet and soiled. And it might mean you do need to check them a little bit more frequently for a week or so, but that will give you a really good picture of when maybe they are more likely to need the toilet. Cause that might, you might then see, okay, well, I, every time I give them a drink within half an hour, their nappy's wet. Mm. So you might know that, yep, I give them a drink and then maybe 20 minutes later we sit on the toilet. The other thing I like actually sometimes is also for some kids, letting them be a little bit in control of that process. So it might be that the first time you say to them, do you need the toilet? And the child says, yes, you take them off. They say, no, you, you let, them, let them be. But then in a little while, you might, instead of asking the question, you might say, okay, let's go and try. Mm. So you're letting them become aware and, and notice when they're wet or they're dry, but you're also not leaving it so long that they might then have an accident. So that's another way people like sometimes. Yeah, I love the uh, the diary idea is a really good one. <clears throat> mm. Excuse me. Well, thank you heaps, Brianna. And we've also included some websites in this newsletter yes. that might help you in that process. And I think it's really important just to remember that no one size fits all. No. And it's just Thank about you. finding what feels comfortable to you. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And all three of my children were 100% different and it just tells yep. you. Thanks so much for joining us today. No worries. Thanks, Lou.